when I started the Gender Queer Atheist channel on uh, YouTube, I knew that I was specifically directing my comments and my productions toward gender queer people. It never occurred to me to have to create an apologia or a body of reference work for cisgendered people, non-gender queer people, non-trans people. It never occurred to me. My focus is on the community that really needs solidarity, needs support, needs access to information, needs networking, and needs to know there are others out there and that they're not crazy and that their struggles are valid. Everything from being closeted to being concerned about hormone therapy and um, surgery to why can't I just be in the biological body I'm in and live my life the way I want to live it. All you have to do is use uh, a search engine. All the information's out there. That's how I found it. That's how we, that's how gender queer people find it. We type stuff into search engines and slowly but surely going down some really dark alleys sometimes we find the information we need and we find each other. I had a commenter in R. Riverstone 1 ask me what a cisgendered person was. This is a nice guy. Person I really like. I'm glad he subscribed to my channel. Um, for the most part, I enjoy his videos. But it was like, oh, why do I have to do the work? You, you're on a freaking computer. Go look it up yourself. He's a sweet guy, and I kind of unloaded on him, and I feel kind of bad about it. But then on the other hand, it's like, mm hmm. So I'm not going to say die, sis, scum. I'm going to say stub your toe, sis, scum. The reason I'm not going to say die, sis, scum is because a couple of incidents have happened lately that cis people don't usually know about. The first one is that damn radical feminist conference that they were going to have in London. Some of the things they're saying about particular specifically trans people. They don't seem to even be aware that there's such a thing as gender queer. Some of the things they're saying are just heinous and cruel and arrogant and ignorant and they mock and ridicule how people even look and calling people rapists for being trans women that want to be able to attend a women's event and and it breaks my heart because I'm a feminist and a genderqueer. And God, what we have in common is so much more important than the fear and suspicion and paranoia and, and internal damage that we're taking out on each other. Now, I don't know all the particulars on this. And somebody, please, in comments, if you can tell me, I'm not even looking this up. This is a, this is a rant or a ramble. Some asshat in the trans community, or identifying as being in the trans community, threatened to bomb the Radical Feminist Conference. I'm not going to make excuses for that. I know that in any community, when they, when people, any marginalized community, when they feel boots on their necks, and a kind of hate and nastiness. I'm not saying that what the Rad Fems were saying deserves a bombing, but I can understand the anger. And you know, not everybody on the planet is wrapped very tight. And yeah, I'm going to distance myself from anybody who threatens physical violence to anybody else for any reason. I am. But that happened. And then Lacey Green happened. If you don't know about Lacey Green, she's been silenced. Again, by people who claim to be trans, who are, in my opinion, nitpicking her, not respecting the positive work she's doing, and instead focusing on 
some of them legitimate arguments about her work, some transphobic things she's done that she apologized for and corrected, um, some other stuff. It's not important here. But they found out where she lived, and they took, they got, I guess, Google photos of her apartment and stuff. And she's so intimidated that she has stopped producing some of the most sex positive, most inclusive videos on the internet, has stopped conversing on Tumblr, and her Facebook page has gone dark. So I'm not going to say die, sis scum. I'm going to say stub your toe. Hurt a little. We have to. See, with your privilege, you can just not learn about us. And then make all kinds of opinionated stuff about trans people. And when you hear trans people, I bet you see somebody who looks like a Barbie doll in a sequin gown with lipstick who can pass for a cisgendered supermodel. So you don't know who we really are. That's why I make my videos for us. If you have legitimate questions, fine. But if it's like terminology and definitions, please look it up. I'm not here to do Genderqueer 101. I'm here to provide sanctuary for people who are disappeared from the quilt bag community. And if you don't know what quilt bag is, queer, undecided, intersex, lesbian, trans, bi, and I would consider pansexual, uh, a, asexual, G, gay. I keep forgetting they're gay people. It's not just about cisgendered, middle-class, white, gay men getting married. Do you get that? We've got kids who are contemplating suicide. 40% of the homeless kids on the street are queer kids. And most of those aren't gay and lesbian. Most of those are genderqueer. They don't fit the binary. We've got people getting addicted to substances because they have to do sex work for a living because their families disown them or because they have to cover up how horrible they feel and trying to dull the pain. We've got people contemplating suicide. We've got people for whom there is no safe place on the planet to be who they are. So when I talk about gender queer issues, I'm talking to them. I'm giving them some sanctuary. No, I don't want you to die. Although sometimes I have my moments. Because if there were no cis people, little kids wouldn't be forced into muddy, dark, ugly toys like army stuff and footballs. And little girls wouldn't be forced into fluorescent pink twinkly shit. And you know there's a lot of other genders besides little boys and little girls. There's other sexes. You know intersex? You don't know what that means? Remember that old word, hermaphrodite? Go look up why they don't use the word hermaphrodite anymore. Why they use intersex instead. Do you know those children are forcibly assigned to a gender, either male or female, based on the physical appearance of their genitalia at birth? They don't have a choice. Some of them are never told that they're intersex. They go through their whole lives feeling uncomfortable and like, they don't fit in and they don't know why. So no, I don't want you to die. But it's like the same debate about what if there was no religion. You know, we'd still fight with each other. I've got black atheists over there on Facebook that grand unified, grand unified, they call themselves, laughing at me because I'm talking about quilt bag issues and genderqueer issues. You know, I love Tombstone the Dead Man. How many black atheists are there on, on the internet? How many of them are creating poetry and spoken word? I love him. I'm supportive of him. And his crew are laughing at me? Imagine if little kids could just be little kids and didn't have to be forced into a particular wardrobe to match their sex, a.k.a. their gender. Forced into a gender. What if kids could just be kids and play with toys and wear clothes that they just wanted to wear. What if a little kid, sex undetermined, just walked down the street in an army helmet and a tutu? Who cares whether it's a boy or a girl or a 
intersex person or who cares? Why are we doing this? Why are we segregating people? Why are we creating gender ghettos? And then you wonder why there's things like radical feminists and men's rights advocates. They don't realize they both have something in common. What they're angry about is gender roles. Both of them. They have a lot more in common with us than they know. Yet I've got MRAs coming down my throat and I've got feminists coming down my throat. I've got atheists coming down my throat just for saying we're alive on the planet and our lives are in danger and we need to explore who we are. And we're real. So sometimes it seems like it would be a lot better if cisgendered people would just disappear. Because we don't have any safe space except on the interwebs. We really don't. There's, you can't go to a genderqueer resource center and hang out with your siblings and shoot some pool and read some books and plan a revolution. There's no place like that. And when we tell you there's a difference between sex and gender and gender presentation and sexual orientation, listen. You know, Atheism TV told me, when I identified as a genderqueer, they told me, Oh, we support gay rights. We support gay marriage. I'm not gay and I don't want to get married. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. The complete and total media blackout. We're afraid to speak up because we could lose our jobs, lose our children, lose our spouses, lose our freedom, even our mental freedom. They could put us in hospitals and drug us. Do you see that? This is the only time I'm talking to cisgendered people. Gay, straight, lesbian, bisexual, pansexual. This is the only time. I've got to talk to my people. Educate yourself. Be an ally. Be a real ally. Not just, oh, well, I support gay marriage. Know who we are. Even the, like I said, the queer media is leaving us out. Gay voices on Huffington Post. LGBT and all they do is lesbian and gay. And mostly gay. Glad. Gay and lesbian AAD. And the only genderqueer people they promote are trans women who look like freaking Barbie dolls. Not that there's anything wrong with those women. They get to be that way. But that's what Glad thinks genderqueer is. Be an ally. A real ally. And I bet most of the people I'm talking to are subscribed to Zinnia Jones. Jeez. Be a real ally. Or just go away.